So Tammy's amazing. I want to I want to tell you a little bit about Tammy. She is uh, she's my go-to gal. So anytime I have trouble, anything in my life that I'm just messed up or mess mess, that's who I go to. I go to her, and uh, she you know she knows so much about healing ministry, and man, she could just say a word, and and things happen. So I'm just so thankful for her being a part of Life of Love Ministries. You know when the Lord started this thing and built this thing. We watched him strategically bring in key people that had poured into this region for so many years. Strategically, he handpicked them. And I believe that he handpicked Tammy for a day like today to bring a message God put on her heart. And I, pre- I put people, you know, listen, I put people on the spot. I put Darlene on the spot several times. I put I put Tammy on the spot, and I might put you on the spot sometime, but don't be scared of that. Dig in. See where you can volunteer. See where you can help. I watch what the Lord's doing. He's weeding out. He's weeding out people from this place. He's creating a usable people. That's what he's doing in us. He's creating a usable people. Some people will come to church, and they come just to get. But he's pre- creating a usable people that will learn how to give. Receiving is good too. Be a good receiver as well as a giver. But Tammy, I just want you to come up here. I just want to thank God. Let's stand and give her a good welcome. She is so amazing. Shelly Shelly forgot to tell you guys that on December 27th, we're having a Christmas party. And there's going to be a sign up. Um, There's a sign up back here on the back for that Christmas party. uh, for whatever you want to bring for the Christmas party, and I need them to sign up if they're going to come, so we know how many. So, kind of, um, she's going to have a sheet back here for you to sign up if you're going to be here the 27th after service. We're going to rearrange this room and create a um, place so we can all um, worship together in in the dining style. So, um, without further ado, here's my blessed friend Tammy. Made me cry. <laughs> I just uh, love Jason and Shelly so much and all of you. Um, I truly am thankful just to be here in this house and uh, worship with you guys this morning and and to be able to bring a word of encouragement. Um, I know last week Pastor Shelly spoke on Thanksgiving and being thankful and how important that is, and it truly is. And I, I hope you all had glorious Thanksgivings to be able to spend time with your loved ones and, and just a time of fellowship. So anyway, as I was praying about what to speak about this morning, I heard the Lord say, serving. And so I, I thought, that, that sounds good. And there's a scripture I want to refer to. Forgive me. It was so funny. This morning, I went to print out my message, and it wouldn't go to the printer. It, the printer's down in the basement. I was upstairs. So I go downstairs, and it didn't print. So I hit the reset on the computer. I go back upstairs and try to print again. Well, the message is five pages, and it only printed four. <laughs> so I thought that was, that was funny. A little bit of a challenge this morning. All right, I'm going to go back up here. Let's see. There we go. Thank you for your patience. (laughs) So yes, um, the Lord was just speaking to me about serving him with our lives, serving others with our lives. And uh, one of the scriptures that he gave me was Matthew 20, 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many, we're to follow his example and become more and more like him, laying down our life. And he also spoke to me about uh, so many that are struggling with anxiety and depression, um, and especially during this time, you know, the holidays. I know there are many of you that have lost loved ones that aren't going to be with you at Christmas, or maybe you have a family that's out of town. I, I know both my sons are, are living out of state, and so um, that's a challenge as well, just missing your family and loved ones during the holidays. And so as the Lord 
was just reminding me about some of those things, he brought back to my remembrance my overcoming depression and just that anxiety uh, through serving. Many, many years ago when my children were small, uh, I remember just being in a really dark place and having these overwhelming thoughts of depression and just being hopeless, you know, for my situation. My husband was a truck driver, you know, here I have three small children at home, I'm homeschooling, we have horses and goats and chickens and, and taking care of a home and all these things and I just remember feeling so overwhelmed. And during that time, um, the enemy, you know, he does not play fair <laughs> and he tried to convince me of my having a, a breakdown, a mental breakdown or a psychotic break because of things that had gone on in my family. I had a cousin that was schizophrenic and then my grandmother and my mother both ended up having ner nervous breakdowns in their lifetime. And my, my grandmother, when she was eight years old, she and her family were on the way to town and they were in a buckboard with horses and so they were traveling to town and it was real foggy, she said that morning. And when they were going across the railroad tracks, the buckboard got caught on the rails of the track. And so my great grandfather ended up getting everyone out of the buckboard and he was trying to get the horses loose when the train hit him and struck him and killed him. And like I said, she was only eight years old at that time. And so, after that had happened, her mother had to go into town and get a full, you know, get a job to support the family since my grandmother was, my grandfather wasn't living any longer. And so um, my grandmother had the responsibility of taking care of her three brothers and, you know, she's the girl. And so her responsibility was to get up early and cook for them and make sure that they were ready for school and, and all of those things. She had a major responsibility. Well, by the age of 13, she ended up having a mental breakdown because of all of the press, pressure that she was under as a, as a child. And I remember her telling me that she had to learn how to walk and talk all over again because of that that she had gone through. And so she, I mean, she too was an overcomer, and I'm so thankful for that, you know, that I could learn from her stories. And then my mother, um, she also had a, a breakdown after I was born. I guess right after I was born, she had a nervous breakdown, and I remember my family telling me, I don't remember it, but I remember my family saying that she actually moved in with us for a couple of years and took care of me during that time. And um, so anyway, those things had happened in my family. And so I remember when, once again, when my kids were small and just having this overwhelming responsibility and feeling just such darkness around me. Um, I remember crying out one time, I was out on the front steps, I'm on a cordless phone at that time, not a cell phone, but a cordless phone. <laughs> and I'm talking with my sister and I said, you know, I just, I know God says that he won't give you more than you can bear, but I just can't, I can't bear this, you know, the things that I was going through. And so my sister said, have you ever thought to ask him to relieve some of the burden, to take the burden from you? And it was like the light bulb went off. <laughs> you know, it was like a major revelation. And so I, I hadn't thought of that. And so I did. I asked him. I said, God, I can't take this, you know, and I need you to, to lighten the load. And sure enough, he did. He, he lightened the load. I was also sharing some of these things with a friend of mine and she suggested the joy formula to fight depression. And depression, um, not all of it, but most of it is focused inward. And when we focus inward, then we can just be weighed down and heavy burden because of, once again, life situations. And so when we turn our focus to the Lord, 
then that's when healing can come and, and different things can come to our lives. And so anyway, she shared the joy formula. And the joy formula is Jesus first, ourself second, I'm sorry, others second, and yourself last. And so I really began to pray about that. And I said, okay, Lord, I need your joy. You know, I need your joy to come in and make a difference in my life. And I'm not saying that, you know, all depression, there sometimes is a chemical imbalance, and that's different. But at the same time, God can bring healing for that as well. And so during this time, he was just, the Lord was walking me through these things. And so as I prayed about, okay, Lord, how can I put you first, and how can I um, just experience your joy? And so as I was praying, the Lord really spoke to me about helping others and not to be so self-focused. And so as I did that, uh, he actually led me to read a daily bread devotional. I don't know how many of you use those, but at that time it was just perfect. And I remember reading in this little devotional that older people, elderly, are put in nursing homes and they're forgotten about and no one goes to visit, and so on and so forth. And so as I prayed about that, I, I really connected with that, you know, felt like that was something I needed to pursue. And so at that time, I contacted a nursing home here in Martinsville, and I asked if there were any individuals that lived there that didn't have family, and they actually had a list of three names of three ladies that didn't have family that was coming to visit. And so I loaded up the kids, we baked some cookies, and, and took them to the nursing home. And we met a, a wonderful lady, really hit it off, and decided to go and visit her on a regular basis. And it was so funny how the Lord used that to bless her. Um, when we first got there, the first day we met her, she said, I haven't had a bath this week. And she was really upset about it. And so I said, well, let me talk with the nurses. And so I went down and talked with them. And um, the next week when we came back, she said she was so excited that they gave her a bath. You know, before we came, they knew we were coming. We went and visited her for a total of two years before she passed. And it was just incredible. She was so thankful because she said, they know you're coming. <laughs> And when they know you're coming, you know, they make sure that she would have a bath and she was all cleaned and ready for the visit. And so that was just, you know, so wonderful. And during that time, also, uh, she was estranged with her son. Her son actually lived here in Martinsville, but he hadn't seen her in months. And so as we went and, and were faithful to visit, he caught wind, you know, that these strangers are coming in and visiting his mom. And so he wanted to check us out and find out about this. And so what ended up happening is the Lord restored their relationship, which was incredible. And so he started going and visiting on a regular basis as well. And he would bring her gifts and spend time with her. And so it was just, you know, a beautiful time. Um, it was sad to, to lose her, but the experience was amazing. And just to have my, my kids, I remember Nick, he was only like maybe two or three years old. And uh, she was completely paralyzed except for her left hand. And she could move her head and she could talk. And so I would put him up on the bed and he would hold her hand. And it was just, it was so sweet. It really was. And uh, so I'm very, very thankful for that time. I remember one time taking in some pumpkin bread for her to have, and her roommate's husband was visiting. And so I go in, and I hand him some pumpkin bread, and he's going, oh, man, this is delicious, and he loved it. And uh, her name was Sybil. She goes, I thought you brought that for me. <laughs> <laughs> and so we laughed, and, and so gave her her banana bread as, as well, or pumpkin bread, whatever it was. And so that was really good. And so then... I really put my mind to um, seeking people out that could use help, that I could serve in some way. And at first, my husband wasn't all that crazy about it. He thought, you know, what are you doing? And I said, well, I felt like the Lord laid it on my heart, you know, to serve the elderly. And so that's what I did. And at the time, 
our finances weren't that great. Uh, we didn't, you know, we didn't tithe. We didn't have money for that. At that, you know, that was our his thinking at the time. Um, but I love the verse that says that the Lord gives so I'm sorry seed to the sower, and that God would supply seed. And so when I was praying about it, I felt like God said, even though I didn't have money, I could definitely give of my time. And so that's why I, I would go and serve. And there was an elderly couple down our road, and I would go and clean for them and run errands or whatever they would need. And that was a real blessing as well. And so, like I said, during this time, Clay is kind of questioning what I'm doing. And I was here we didn't have money, and so I'm, I'm doing this for these, these older people. Well, we end up having $400 show up in our checking account. <laughs> And we didn't know where it came from. It was just there. And so it was, it was pretty cute. Clay said, Tammy, keep helping the old people. It seems to be working. <laughs> so that was just, you know, once again, such a blessing. And uh, this, I love this scripture, Matthew 6, 31. It says, therefore, be anxious for nothing and say, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows what you need. Sir, I'm sorry, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And boy, isn't that just what happens? You know, when you put God first, then he truly does. He supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory. And this was funny, too. You know, when you serve people in your family, sometimes you're not appreciated when you do the laundry and when you cook the meals and you do these things at home. Kids might say things like, I don't like that. Um, are there tomatoes in that? You know, and turn their noses up. And husbands might say, oh, man, this house is a mess. Are you ever going to go to the store? Does that have tomatoes in it? <laughs> You get the picture. And so when I would cook and clean for the elderly down the street or go to the nursing home with gifts of baked goods, you would think I was Wonder Woman. <laughs> they would say things like, oh man, the house has never looked better. This tastes so good. I appreciate you all and all you do. It, it felt good. And they would say, you know, that they loved me. And at first I remember questioning the Lord about uh, serving people in the faith. And actually felt a little guilty. I thought, you know, I thought we were supposed to, um, you know, really reach the lost, which we are. But I also read this verse in Galatians 6.10, and it says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those that belong to the family of believers. And I'm so thankful that when I have questions, God leads us to the answers, you know, in his word. So once again, going back to that time uh, of just the depression and uh, working through that, I found that as I continued to give to others, I truly did experience that joy. You know, when you do things for other people and they do appreciate it, and you make a difference in their life and you share Jesus with them, I, I, I can't tell you how wonderful it feels when you look into the eyes of someone that you can pray with and talk to them about and know their situation for those that might be going through a rough time and that when you've been there and you can pray with them and talk to them about those things and give them hope I just love that you know because you have been through things and there's such a power in your testimony when you share it with other individuals and to know that God is going to use you in their lives to bring healing and hope. So I, I did have to war over the thoughts in my mind. And I would declare over my mind that I have the mind of Christ. I don't have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I would put on the armor of God, declaring that I have the helmet of salvation that protects my mind, my thinking, and also my hearing. Serving helped to heal my emotional state. It turned my depression into joy. 
and as I would help others being aware of their situation, mine didn't seem so unbearable. A quote from Francis Fran Japan, if you want to identify the hidden strongholds in your life, you need only to survey the attitude of your heart. Every area in your thinking that glistens with hope in God is an area which is being liberated by Christ. But any system of thinking that does not have hope, which feels hopeless, is a stronghold which must be pulled down. And I just love that because if there's, once, just like he said, you know, if there's any area in your life where you don't have hope or you don't have, you know, just excitement for living or what's up ahead, you really need to examine the thoughts that you're having and take those thoughts captive into the obedience of Christ. You need to replace every lie that you're believing from the enemy with God's word, with his truth. Uh, I love the concordance in the back of the Bible. Um, if you're struggling with anything, depression, anxiety, look scriptures up on the opposite. For instance, like um, with depression, look up joy, peace, thanksgiving, and begin to renew your mind. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will and his good, pleasing, and perfect will is for your life. So transformation will come as you meditate on God's word and replace those lies with the truth of his word. John 8, 32 says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You know, years ago when I was in Cleansing Stream Ministries, they gave us a statistic, and I think I've shared this before, but um, as far as inner healing and deliverance, 75% of freedom comes just by knowing the truth. Isn't that amazing? And they said 20% was inner healing and 5% demonic. So when, with those statistics in mind, the word of God is a powerful tool that we have. And to just put that into practice. And back to serving. Um, Ephesians 6, 7 says, serve wholeheartedly as if you're serving the Lord and not people. And I love that too. You know, every time that you serve God and you're just, um, you know, concentrating on glorifying him, being a witness for him, and being the light in the world, you know, to know that you do represent him. And when you're serving him, he's going to bless you. Um, he truly loves to, to bless, bless us in all ways. Colossians 3.24, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. And so he does. He loves to bless us. Uh, another good verse, 1 Corinthians 10.24, let no one seek his own good but the good of his neighbor. Philippians 2.3 and 4. Let each one of you not only look to his own interests, but to the interest of others. So once again, just learning to take your thoughts captive, um, replacing those lies with truth, to know that God is your hope. That um, This is another quote from Francis Fran Japan. How easy it is to blame others for our unhappiness, but we are only unhappy when something other than Christ has become our life. Yes, so once again, make, make the Lord your top priority. The Bible says that he gives us beauty for ashes. He gives us joy for mourning. So when you step out in obedience, there's a beautiful heavenly exchange that takes place. And I've tried to you know, live my life as a life of service to the Lord. Um, you know, there's so many wonderful memories I have of just serving others and once again just the joy that comes in doing that. I was able to go to Roatan years ago, Roatan Honduras and 
we went to a dump and people were living there and we got to take them a lunch and just serve them and pray with them and just how incredible that was. And once again, just to see the look of, of hope, you know, in their eyes when you're serving them and talking to them about the Lord and, and just letting them know that, that Jesus truly is the answer. So just want to encourage you to look for opportunities to share the gospel with every, you know, wherever you go. Um, there are so many opportunities just here in town. I know I, I, I like to pay attention when I'm in a store to my, the cashier or whoever's waiting on me to just you know, kind of pick up on their body language. I, I know there have been times I'll um, go to the dollar store. Um, just one memory in particular, there was a young lady that you could tell she was in pain. And I said, are you okay? And she said, no, not really. She said, I've got this migraine headache. And I'm so thankful. The Lord's pretty good about clearing the line behind me. <laughs> He's pretty good about making sure I'm not holding anything up. And so there wasn't anyone behind me. And I asked, you know, if I could pray with her. And so she kind of looked shocked at first, but she said, sure. And so I, I prayed, you know, that the headache would be gone and that the Lord would give her peace. And sure enough, he did. And I love that, you know, because you see the look on their eyes and they're, they're kind of shocked. I don't know why <laughs> we shouldn't be shocked, you know, when the Lord does these wonderful things because that's who he is. But it's just such a blessing, you know, to go out into the marketplace and, and just share Jesus with whoever, you know, the Lord would bring your way. So I just want to encourage you, you know, to, to look for opportunities to serve and to just pour your heart out, you know, to these people and let the Lord fill you up so you can pour out. It's an incredible exchange. And I, I'm here to tell you that I don't struggle with depression. You know, those lies that the enemy tried to uh, beat me up with, those are defeated and they truly are under my feet. That God is the Lord of my life. He gives me hope. He gives me joy. And I know I can trust him with all things. So I just want to uh, say a prayer over you this morning and encourage you, if there's anything you're struggling with, to come to the altar and just uh, spend some time in prayer. I love you all so much. And so, Lord, I just once again want to thank you for each and every person here today. Oh, yes. Uh, the Lord, I, I heard him say that you are his delight. He delights in each one of you. He loves you. You're the apple of his eye. He loves it when you call upon his name, when you turn your affection toward him, and he's there with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He uh, loves the opportunity to just move in your life. So, Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for each and every one here and the opportunities that they avail to you to move into in their lives, Lord, to make a difference, to answer their prayers. Lord, you know what their hearts are crying out for today. You know each and every one. Lord, we pray that those needs would be met. Lord, may this holiday season truly be a time of celebrating your birth, your coming again. Lord, we love you and we praise you in all these things. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. So is there anybody needs to pray this morning? And be honest with yourself. I mean, don't go through this next week or this next holiday, this next relationship without freedom. There's just no sense in it. So let's just close our eyes. I want you to know this morning how much Father loves you. How much he longs for a relationship. I cannot emphasize that enough. And every eye closed this morning.
Is there someone in here that just needs prayer? That needs breakthrough in their life this morning? Just raise your hand. I see those hands. God sees those hands. I see that hand. He knows your heart. Father loves you so much. I see that hand. Come on, guys. That's all he wants for you is breakthrough. Freedom. You know, you might not be in jail. You've been there. You might not be in jail, but you got chains on. You got things weighing you down. Things that are not of heaven. That you're not supposed to have. You got things reigning in your life that's not supposed to be there. You got things ruling in your life that's not supposed to be there. Whether it be attitudes, emotions, financial problems. See, God didn't create a people to have all these problems. He didn't. He created an amazing people. And Tammy gave several testimonies. So much great scripture. The truth will truly set you free. If you will believe it. And apply it to your life. If you have your hand up, I would love for you to come up here and pray. If you're a family, I'd love you to come up here as a family and pray. We'll have people that will pray with you. God wants to do something amazing in your life, even today. This day's not over. Come on. Come on, you're all right. Come with them. Come with them. Come on. Watch what God wants to do, buddy. We're going to ask you if you really work, if you guys would just, if you want to know here, there's pillows right here, and we're going to have a team come and pray behind you. I promise it's going to be amazing. I promise it's going to be amazing. It's something you've never experienced before. My prayer warriors. This is a family. This is, I remember, I remember when I was there with my family at the altar, kneeling down. When I said, God, I'll give you 100% of my life. And that's what I've done. I've given him 100% of my life and this family. And that's what they want right now. That's what God wants for them right now. Father, I thank you for this family right here. I ask, Lord, that you would just place a special blessing on them today. I'm even going to ask this while they're here. I feel like that God wants to give them a financial blessing today. So you that have and can give today, I want to ask you to stretch, stretch yourself and pour into this family this morning. I want to show them the love of God through his people. And I'm going to start it out. I'm going to start it out this morning. I'm going to place this $100 bill right here in front of them. And I'm going to ask you guys to do the same. We're just going to come up here and we're just going to place it right here. Because this is God. This is what he does. He's a miracle worker and a promise keeper. And this is what he wants for his people. For his children. He wants to bless them. When they don't feel worthy. But they are worthy. You're a family that has so much value. And God loves you so much that he wants to bless you this morning. Not so you'll come back to life of love, but so you'll have a relationship with him. It ain't about this place, but it's about a relationship with him. He wants to honor you this morning. And I promise you, if you mind God, people, if you mind God, he will do the same thing for you in your life. We have to step up. We have to give in. We have to mind God. 
and do what he says to do, when he says to do it, not when we want to do it or when we're ready to do it, but when he says to do it, we have to do it then. That's what it means. We can't sit on the sidelines and continue to sit in the muck that we're in. We've got to get up and get out of it and move past it and move on to the thing that God has called us to. We're supposed to be out in the highways and byways reaching people, but we're in our mess and we can't reach out because we're sitting in a mess. And God does not want that for any one of us at all. This is a holiday season that so many people go through so much. It's like the enemy puts so much on them in this time. And this is the time to enjoy and rejoice because a Savior was born that we could live, that we could have eternal life. I promise you, God is going to bring freedom to you if you will mind Him and honor Him. I promise you. Thank you, givers. You cannot ever get out and give God. You're never going to be able to. You're never going to be able to. Pay your bills first and then try. To give, give your money to the church, what God says to give, but then pay your bills and then above that, try to outgive Him. You ain't going to be able to. You're not. Family that's here right now, God loves you so much. You're never going to be able to outgive Him. Pour yourself into Him, into a relationship with Him. For He loves you. He thinks you're an amazing daughter. He loves you so much, young lady. He has such great plans for you. And there's so many people that are out there waiting on your voice, your testimony that they would come to know the knowledge of Jesus Christ through you. Mom, through you. You've raised these beautiful kids. I don't know your story. There's nothing about it. But I know Father loves you so much. He brought you here today for this reason. To tell you how much He loves you. This doesn't matter. But what you do from this day forward matters. Because it's going to matter in their life. You can break off old generations, old curses off your life. And we're going to start new things today. We're going to start a new life today. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. You guys want to do that? You want to do that? Raise your hand if you want to do that. If you want to start a new life today. Do you all know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you know Jesus? Is it Luke? Logan? Logan, do you know Jesus Christ? It's the second Logan we have. You know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? You ask Him to come in your heart, live in your life? You believe He's there? He is. He just wants a deeper relationship. Okay? So right now we're just going to pray and we're just going to rededicate our lives to Jesus right now. You pray in your own words and I'm just going to pray a prayer over top of you. Father, we believe in these three. Father, we thank you for them for their hearts today, for what you've done in their life today, for the change that's happened that's irreversible. We thank you, Father, that you're doing an amazing work in their life, that you love them so much, that you love Logan so much. I see a mighty warrior in you, Logan. I see that you've had to be the man sometimes. Step in. God's asking you to step up. Continue to walk forward. You have a big realm of influence. There's people that look at you and watch you. And they're going to do what you do. You follow Jesus and watch them follow Jesus too. Father, we thank you for this family again. We glorify you for them. Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys. You're good to go. If nobody else wants to pray, you're good to go.